Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. A six-headed mutated shark threatens the lives of couples who have gone camping on a desert island with the intention of saving their relationship. Today we will recap the story of the 2018 movie, Six-Headed Shark Attack. In 1984, a group of biology students celebrate their graduation party on a boat on the high seas, near Hart Island. During the party, a young man and his girlfriend argue and the young woman ends up throwing her wedding ring into the ocean. A few minutes later, the girl notices that a strange creature is approaching the boat and runs inside. Suddenly, one of the students is pulled into the water and eaten alive. Everyone despairs and tries to hide from that monster. However, the young woman is unable to escape and is also attacked by the six-headed mutant shark. Thirty years have passed since the day this massacre took place and will reunite with four other couples on that same island, where the tragic incident took place. The man, along with his wife, had devoted years of his life to providing therapy to couples who were on the verge of separation. Will proposes that they disconnect from everything around them so they can reconnect with each other. Therefore, they were all taken to a deserted island where there was not even a phone or internet signal. He proposes some activities that should be carried out between couples to increase their attunement. As his wife was not present, he enlists the help of Mary to carry out a demonstration, arousing great jealousy in her husband, James. After the activity, Will asks Brad and Rebecca, his helpers, to leave some supplies on the floating platform so the couples can enjoy a moment of relaxation. After preparing the platform, they decide to row to the reef, as Rebecca believes that the view from that place is very beautiful. When the couple finally arrive at the scene, they feel something moving in the water. Brad is the first to be knocked off his board and then Rebecca also falls into the sea. In a few seconds, the mutated shark approaches and immediately devours them. Meanwhile, Will rows to the boat where his wife Suzanne and Zach are. The woman went there to collect her husband's signature to finalize the divorce. After insisting that their marriage was over, Suzanne gets Will's signature and leaves with her current boyfriend. The couples need to go out in search of supplies to ensure their survival on that island and Sarah puts on her wetsuit to go in search of food. However, Jake, her boyfriend, is more interested in exploring the island, having heard that, on the other side of the hill, there was a laboratory responsible for performing top-secret experiments with animals. However, Sarah is more concerned with taking care of the couple's needs, so Jake decides to accompany her. In the bungalow next door, James tries to convince Mary to leave that island, as he can't even put on his wetsuit. The woman tries to convince him to give in to the experience, but the guy is only interested in getting the hell out of there. So Mary goes to talk to Will. The man was trying to communicate with Brad and Rebecca, but apparently they had disappeared. At that moment, Mary appears and says that her husband is not willing to give in to that experience and asks him to take them back to the coast. Will tries to insist that they stay, but Mary asks for a refund and threatens him that as a lawyer, she would sue him for false advertising. The woman claims that both she and the other members of that group were there to work with Suzanne, Will's wife, however, the therapist had not yet appeared there. So Will promises to return her money and take her home the next day, along with her husband. After the conversation, the man continues looking for his companions and ends up finding Brad's foot floating among the rocks. With no idea what was happening, the couples took the opportunity to jump into the water and swim to the floating platform. Mary stays behind, but slowly approaches the rest of the team. While swimming, she is surprised by a wrecked body adrift and goes into despair. Luckily, Will shows up and manages to rescue her. He claims that is Brad's body and informs him that he was probably attacked by a great white shark. So they devise a plan to get safely to the boat and leave that island. Will gives the instructions for everyone to start rowing and take the platform to a place near the boat. A few minutes later, thanks to teamwork, they manage to reach the boat safely. Will tries to communicate with the Navy for help, but gets no response. The couples insist on leaving that island as soon as possible, but Will refuses to leave without knowing what happened to Rebecca. Duke decides to help him on that rescue mission, but Daphne, his wife, tries to talk him out of that idea. However, the man is determined to face that monster, claiming that humans are the alpha predators. Jake threatens to sue Will if he doesn't get them to safety immediately. However, the guy is more concerned with finding his co-worker. Upon returning to the island, Will and Duke assemble a makeshift rifle. The plan is to skewer the shark's head and blow its brains out. Duke cuts his hand and lets the blood flow into the water. In this way, the monster is attracted and he has the opportunity to strike it. The strategy worked, however. What nobody expected is that the creature would have another five heads to bite the man. When Duke least expected it, the animal emerges from the water and attacks him. The five heads compete with each other to decide who will get the prey. During the fight, Duke's body is destroyed and splits in half. Then one of the heads rips off that limb that had been destroyed and will runs away. Daphne is desperate to witness the brutal death of her husband and, to make matters worse, 
the hull of the vessel hits a rock and the group is stranded. When he returns to the boat, Will asks the couples to return with him to the island. As the boat was damaged, they would not be able to get out of that place without help. Therefore, the best option would be to wait on dry land. There, at least, the shark could not attack them. Despite their fear, they agree that this is their best chance to survive and jump into the sea. However, when they arrive on the island, Sarah, the group's meteorologist, notices that a major storm is approaching, which will likely cause the entire island to be flooded. Therefore, the only alternative is to take shelter in an old lighthouse from the first war that was located on the south side of the island. However, Sarah claims they won't be able to get there in time as the island would be flooded before then. So Jake suggests that they take shelter in the old lab, which consisted of floating docks. That way, they would be safe, as they would rise along with the water, regardless of the height of the tide. Also, the place could have a radio to call for help and weapons in case they have to face that monster. When they arrive at the lab, they discover that the place is a dump and would likely fall apart before the storm passes. Still, that was the best option they had at the moment. Will finds an old radio and tries to contact some base, but his efforts are futile. James finds notes that reveal how that shark came to be and discovers that scientists were trying to do research in order to pass the shark's ability to regenerate to humans. If a shark takes severe damage and remains alive, it will regenerate. However, this animal that was hunting the group, instead of just having its wounds healed, a new head emerged in the place of the injury, causing it to become a six-headed monster. The only way to kill that creature is to hit its heart, because every time a head is ripped off, another grows in its place. However, the creature has a single heart, which cannot be regenerated. As they discussed what should be done in this situation, Will found Rebecca's surfboard, which was covered in bite marks. Just then, the floating lab starts to rock and Jake falls into the water. Then, a metal shelf is knocked over, blocking the passage that the man had to return to the boat. Sarah despairs and tries to find him. A few seconds later, her boyfriend emerges and, with the help of the other team members, is pulled back into the vessel. The couple hug and the girl cries with relief knowing that Jake is okay. Suddenly, the mutated monster appears and pulls Sarah into the water. Jake tries to help her and is also captured. That was the tragic end of the young couple. Will orders the survivors to swim back to the island while he distracts the creature. Just then, he hears a call on the radio. Suzanne heard his cry for help and was trying to communicate with him. The man asks her to take her boat to the lighthouse and wait for the survivors. The shark invades the place, but Will manages to escape and return to the island. Now the only concern they had was getting to the lighthouse in time to hide from the storm. Well, at least that's what they thought. Even on solid ground, something completely bizarre and unlikely happens. The mutant shark comes out of the water and uses its side heads as paws to walk under the sand. The animal begins to run towards the lovebirds that, seconds ago, were talking about resuming their marriage, if they left that place alive. Kip is captured and asks Angie to flee but the woman refuses to abandon him and ends up being dragged along with her husband. Both are devoured and the rest decide to flee before that creature starts chasing them. But to everyone's nightmare, the six-headed shark not only can walk, it can also run. The creature was about to reach its fangs when Will appears with a machete and rips off one of the bizarre monster's heads. Severely injured, the animal retreats and returns to the sea. Then, the rest of the team runs to the lighthouse, where Zack and Suzanne would be waiting by boat, while James and Will go looking for the control panel to turn on the light. Mary stays with Daphne and tries to calm her down. The woman was still very traumatized by her husband's death and starts talking to herself, as if she were talking to him, realizing that her friend was completely in shock. Mary goes to Will and her husband for help. Just then, Daphne gets up and leaves the lighthouse. Meanwhile, the sea monster quickly swims towards the lighthouse while its head regenerates. James takes advantage of the few minutes he is alone with Will to intimidate him, saying that he knows very well what is going on between him and Mary. Overcome with jealousy, the man takes a shotgun and intends to use it to threaten the guy who is supposedly having an affair with his wife. However, the gun is empty and Will manages to catch the bullets before James can do anything wrong, then claims that nothing is happening between him and the woman. At that moment, Mary appears and informs them that she has found a box full of acetylene, which soldiers used to turn on lights during the war. Then, James states that he will turn on the beacon light and orders Will to charge the acetylene. Mary decides to stay with Will to help him as, according to her, there are too many cylinders for a single person to carry. This only serves to further increase James's suspicions of being betrayed and arouse his fury. While they were busy trying to survive, Daphne gives in to grief and goes to the beach. The woman climbs on one of the rocks to be very close to the sea and starts screaming, hoping that the demon shark will hear her. Lucky for her, or unlucky for her, her prayers were answered. The monster appears, jumps up and eats her. 
Her death was so quick that Daphne must have felt absolutely nothing. A few minutes later, Suzanne and Zack arrive at the lighthouse. The woman asks him to slowly approach the beach and be careful not to bump into any rocks. James sees the boat approaching and warns Will and Mary. At this point, they realize that Daphne is gone, but there is no more time to go after her. Mary sees something heading towards the boat and everyone is curious to know what it is. However, they would soon discover that the mutated shark does not intend to let a single person leave the island alive. The animals start swimming in circles around the boat, creating a whirlpool in the water that would sink them. James runs to the beach and watches his ex-wife being attacked. The man goes into despair, after all, despite everything, he still loved her. Before the vessel sinks, Zack asks Suzanne to jump into the water and try to save herself. With no other alternative, the woman follows her boyfriend's request. At that moment, the boat is swallowed by the ocean and Zack is devoured. Suzanne swims towards the beach, but the shark goes after her. One of his heads snaps at the woman, causing her immediate death. Will stands on top of the rock screaming in despair. For him, there was nothing worse than seeing his wife killed right in front of him and not being able to do anything to save her. Now, more than ever, Will is determined to destroy that freak. Mary says they need to lure the shark out of the sea so it would be much easier to kill. Will asks where she found the acetylene cylinders, as he intends to use the substance to blow the animal's brains out. Will hands James the locker key so he can take the bullets and shoot the cylinders. Before luring the shark out, Marion will bury some cylinders in the sand so that a barrier is formed between them and the creature. As they work, Mary claims they will make it out of that attack alive. Will promises the woman he will help her survive, but he doesn't like the idea of spending the next few years in prison. However, Mary assures him that she will be his lawyer and help him get rid of his sentence in case he is prosecuted. Suddenly, the monster appears and starts walking out of the sea. Will asks them to split up to confuse heads at the time of the attack. They start screaming to get the creature's attention and James prepares to shoot. However, instead of aiming at the cylinders, he tries to hit the shark, which causes the animal to recoil. Will approaches, in a new attempt to lure that monster closer to the cylinders. In that instant, James sees an opportunity to eliminate his supposed competitor. The man prepares to shoot him, but Mary realizes her husband's evil plan and runs towards Will. The woman knocks him to the ground and he narrowly misses a shot in the back. Seeing the shark approaching his wife, James shoots one of its heads and is attacked back in a completely unexpected way. The creature rips off the head that was hit and launches it towards the lighthouse. The man is hit and dies immediately on impact. As he was badly injured, the monster returns to the sea, allowing Will and Mary to escape with their lives. However, they will still have to eliminate that creature if they want to leave that island. Will realizes that, with the rising tide, their boat has come loose from the rocks and this would be their best chance of getting away. The plan now is to take the cylinders and swim them to the vessel, while praying that they won't be eaten on the way. Upon arriving there, Will discovers that the engines are not working and goes to investigate what happened. Meanwhile, Mary finds some materials that can be used as weapons and starts building a makeshift harpoon. Suddenly, the shark approaches the boat and tries to attack them. Mary manages to scare the animal away, but not for long. The creature begins to destroy the vessel's hull and Will prepares to shoot it down the moment he manages to get inside. When the shark enters the boat, the man pierces one of its heads several times with the harpoon, but Mary knows that the creature would still survive and asks Will to go with her to the island. Before they could get out of there, the mutated monster grabs the man's leg, who uses one of the cylinders to attack the animal and get rid of the bite. Will takes his flare and they both jump into the sea. The shark was still trapped in the boat and, when it manages to free itself, it accidentally ends up taking the cylinders containing acetylene with it. In the meantime, Will and Mary manage to reach the island and try to hide among the rocks. However, the shark jumps out of the water and goes after them. Will intends to use the flare to eliminate the creature, but his only ammo falls between the rocks. However, with Mary's help, he manages to retrieve it and shoots one of the cylinders. In doing so, the gas is released and causes an explosion, making shark mincemeat. The animal is completely torn apart and, even separated from its body, the heads try to devour each other, until they finally die. The pair get up and Mary helps Will out of that place. Now that the boat has been destroyed, they'll have to find another way to get the hell out of that island. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.